Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is JJ and today we are going to be taking a look at this amplifier, the Bugera V22 Infinium. Um, I got it about two years ago and it's been my home recording amp uh, for most of my YouTube videos. And uh, a handful of people have asked about it and I wanted to do a, re a review sooner but I just never got around to it. Um, but I think this is a pretty popular choice for a, for a lower end tube amp. And um, its parent company is Behringer, uh, if you're familiar with Behringer amplifiers. Uh, those are uh, based in Germany, but uh, this amp is made in China. So overall, I really like the amp. I really love the way it sounds. Um, it definitely has some issues, but it's cheap, you know. And for the price, it just sounds really great. And I was able to work around some things. I'll get more into that later on. But just in general, I think this is a really great tube amplifier if you're in an apartment like me. You know, you can get a really, a really great sound. Um, you can, you know, crank it up a little bit, but you know, if you don't want to get too loud, it still sounds uh, overall pretty good and, uh, you know, just uh, easy on the wallet. So I am going to play three guitars through this amplifier today, and uh, we're going to get some clean sounds, some dirty sounds, throw in a pedal just to see how the amp responds and uh, hopefully give you a pretty good idea of what this amp is capable of. So with that, let's get started. All right, so I want to quickly go over the specs for this amp. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because the info is out there. I'm frankly just getting all this from the manual and I'm really no expert on amps or parts or anything like that. So. I'm not going to be like giving my opinion on tubes or speakers or whatever. So anyway, the amp is 22 watts all tube. It has three 12 AX7 preamp tubes and two EL84 power tubes. Now the tubes you're going to be hearing today are not the stock tubes. I had to replace those last year. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, the tubes in there right now are JJ Tubes from Slovakia. Now, how could I turn that down? My name is JJ and I'm three quarters Slovak. So perfect match for me. Um, but seriously, those are um, pretty common tubes available on Sweetwater, Amazon, pretty much anywhere you can find parts. Um, it has a 12 inch speaker, uh, two channels, clean and dirty. And there is an individual volume for each channel, the clean uh, label is the volume for the clean channel. The one that says volume is the volume for the gain channel. There's the gain knob. Three band EQ, uh, very cool. Um, master volume, presence, reverb, standby switch. Um, it has normal and bright inputs. I usually use the bright input. That's what I'm going to be using today. Um, I just think it gives it a little bit more edge, but you know, normal sounds fine as well. Um, probably the best feature about this amp is this little button right here called boost. Um, it is a mid boost. So you push that and it gives you a whole bunch of mid range. I think it just really makes your guitar come alive. Uh, really kind of tightens up the sound. Um, so I, uh, we will talk a lot about that when we start playing. Here's the foot switch, uh, channel and reverb, pretty typical. You know, I usually have the reverb on, so it's just gonna stay on. And I don't think I need to show you the back of the amp, it's nothing special. Um, it has an FX loop, which I'm using, works fine. Uh, outputs for external speakers, so if you wanna hook this up to a cabinet, um, you can do that. There's also an impedance uh, switch, so you can, um, select the appropriate setting for your setup. Um, pentode and triode switch. Now I'm usually, I played with both. Right now I'm on triode. Um, pentode, of course, sounds great. You know, the louder it gets, the, uh, the better the amp's gonna sound. But uh, for my apartment, I think, uh, and for, day, for today we're gonna do triode. Frankly, I've never, I've never been in a situation where I needed to use the full power of this amp, you know. The, handful of times I've, I've played this out uh, outside my apartment, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've needed to keep it down. So uh, it certainly has the power, but uh, 
Yeah, I rarely get to use it, and uh, for apartment levels, I think triode is uh, probably your best bet. But again, I've played on with pentode in here. It's it's really not uh, not too bad as long as you uh, be mindful of the volume. You know, just a slight difference in sound. Um, and there's also uh, tube life indicators on the back of the amp. And frankly, I'm really not sure what the signal for tube trouble is. I've seen those things blink from time to time. Uh, like, they'll, I'll see it, you know, against the wall. You know, I'll just see a light flash back there. Um, I did have a little bit of tube trouble a year ago, but again, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, so I'm not really sure what those lights you know, are telling me, but right now the tubes sound fine. Actually, I haven't seen them blink in a while, so maybe everything's all good. Um, anyway, overall, the, uh, the features, the specs are very straightforward, pretty easy to figure out, so I don't think you'll have too hard of a time in that area. All right, so I got my Les Paul. Uh, this is a 2011 traditional Pro with a First Bucker 3 in the bridge and a 57 Classic in the neck. And I have a couple other videos on my channel with this guitar, so I'll put some links up top here, so please check it out. And uh, my mic for today, all the time, all my videos, is a Sennheiser E609. And right now I have it mic'd off the edge of the speaker, and um, you can put it right in the middle. It'll sound still sound good. I just tend to prefer it off the edge, not quite as aggressive. Um, so that's what we're doing today. And um, I'm not sure what the mix is gonna be for this video, whether it's gonna be all the, uh, the um, speaker mic or all, you know, maybe a mix for, with the, what I capture in GarageBand and the camera mic, but um, I will make a note of that in the description or I'll just put it, you know, I'll put some text in the, in the video here. But uh, let's hear how the Les Paul sounds on the Clean Channel, so. some neck picking. Alrighty. Now probably one of the best features about this amp is this little button here that's a mid boost. So when I push that, it just adds a whole bunch of mids into your tone, really makes you cut through it's going to make it sound louder, more clear, and uh, just, yeah, it just really gives you a, a lot of extra punch. So here's the clean tone with the mid boost. Here it is without it real quick. Back on with the mid boost. with the mid boost. So, really a great, uh, really just a uh, great feature. Um, I tend to have it on all the time. I uh, just like that a little bit more punchiness in my tone. I used to kind of toggle it, you know, uh, as, as I needed, but yeah, I just got tired of running all the way over to the amp and, and pushing the button. So, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, kind of in the, in the heat of live performances, you know, when I used this amp, I, I just had the mid boost on uh, all the time. Let's try it, uh, some Tube Screamer, see what happens here. So I'm gonna take the mid boost off. I'll turn it on and off a few times here. So here's a, a little bit of Tube Screamer, add some overdrive to the clean channel, and here's what we got. <laughs> Here's the uh, 
mid boost. <laughs> So, in my opinion, whenever you have that gain, whenever you're going for that, uh, you know, just that uh, nice, you know, kind of mid, mid-level distorted or overdriven tone, the mid boost is pretty essential. Otherwise, you know, whether I'm using the pedal or uh, the overdrive pedal, distortion pedal, or um, you know, we'll we'll see the dirty channel on the amp in a minute here. But uh, you know, I think it it just needs to be tightened up a little bit, and the, the mid boost is a great thing. So. Um, Let's uh, flip over to the to the dirty channel on this amp, and here we go. Now I've got the uh, I've got the gain set at about four, and let's see, let's see how loud this is. Actually, I'm gonna back that off just a hair. Um, actually, my EQ is leveled. Um, I'm, uh, that's how I usually have it in most of my videos. I'll if I need to change anything, I usually just go into uh, GarageBand and uh, you know edit the EQ. Um, but uh, for right now, we got it all leveled off. Volume is reasonable, uh, reasonably loud maybe. I do have earplugs in, but I'm sitting right in front of my amp and it's facing right, uh, right at me. So I'm using earplugs just to give myself a break. And uh, anyway, let's try, some, uh, let's try the dirty channel here. So uh, here we go, Les Paul. The gain's on about four. So you know, this guitar really packs a punch. So uh, this might be like a, uh, you know, the equivalent of the gain being on about five or six with some other some of my other guitars. Uh, here we go. So, just to do some neck quick over here. So actually, the uh, the uh, distorted channel with no mid boost, I think it actually works as a pretty good uh, as a pretty good rhythm tone. So if I you know. Uh, I've done you know I've done recordings with with that before. It actually works uh, it actually works pretty well. Um, for lead though, that's just way too fuzzy, so I'll throw the mid boost on and uh, tighten it up a little bit. Now uh, I'll kick the gain up uh, to about seven here, which uh, and also I'm going to kick the treble up a little bit too. So here's a slightly higher gain setting. Kick the gain all the way up, see what happens. Uh, let's turn the mid boost on with the gain crank, see how that goes. Uh. So 
there's certainly plenty of gain, um, you know, and uh, it'll sound good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get the job done. Personally, I think uh, this amp is best in the probably about the four to seven, uh, the uh, four to seven um, window for gain. Um, it just, uh, I think it uh, works best as like a classic rock or kind of like, you know, low to, to medium distortion. The higher gain stuff just uh, just tends to, um, I don't know, it's just not quite heavy enough, just not, doesn't quite hit you hard enough. Um, but you, again, you can edit, you know, you can add stuff later in post-production. Or if you have pedals, you know, you may be able to, you know, you may be able to uh, get something different out of the amp. But uh, alone, the uh, the distorted channel is certainly good. I think best, like I said, best suited for classic rock, light to medium distortion. But uh, anyway, I'm going to switch to my Strat and we'll play a little bit more. All righty, I got my Strat out. This is a uh, Texas Special Fat Strat. It's got Seymour Duncan pickups in it. And um, I'm going to be focusing only on the single coil strat position because we heard enough humbucker, humbucker with the Les Paul. Um, I'll just say that if you're a strat player, you're gonna love this amp. Um, when I brought when I brought it home and plugged in my Fender, I was in love. It is, it is a fantastic clean tone. So uh, I got the mid boost on right now. I'm just gonna leave it on for now um, and uh, we'll mess with it a little bit later. But I'm just gonna go through these uh, strats uh, pickup position, so here's the neck pickup. Here's uh, position, position four. Position three, middle, uh, let's see here. Instagram uh, have probably seen my Stevie Ray Vaughan videos. I, I did like Little Wing, Texas Flood, stuff like that. And um, it's all thanks to this amp. It's just such a great sound. And um, you know, I got my uh, my Texas Special pickups with this uh, com combined with this amp is just uh, it's really nice. And uh, when I click on the uh, Tube Screamer, uh, I get a really great you know Stevie Ray Vaughan style lead tone. <laughs> I'll just say that the uh, the one thing that I don't think I was I just had a lot of trouble uh, capturing via recording was um, the kind of like pride and joy style um, rhythm playing like the uh, and I'm, I can play it well and it, 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 fr frankly it sounds it sounds great in the room um, you know no matter what the settings are on the amp. Um, you know, the fender just sounds so good through it. But yeah, when I go back and, you know, hear the playback, it just didn't quite, I don't know, the tone just wasn't quite right. And, you know, when I, when I hear Stevie's, you know, version compared to mine, it just, it just wasn't there. So 
Um, I was fooling around with the settings re more recently, and I think I found something that gets me a little bit closer. And I'm going to go ahead and show that right now. So uh, I'm going to take the base and turn it down to three. I'm going to take the, actually, excuse me, I'm going to turn it up to seven, my mistake. I'm going to take the mid, turn it down to three. I'm going to take the treble, turn it up to seven. And I'm going to take the mid boost off. Uh, so I'm kind of widening the sound. And, um, and here's what I get. So uh, here's like uh, it's kind of a pride and joy, uh, part of the pride and joy intro. previous setting so you think uh, frankly in the room they both sound good uh, I might prefer the one with the mid boost my, my typical you know my typical setting but um, in previous attempts the uh, the other the alternate setting has sounded much better uh, when, I, when I listen to it back so we'll see what happens uh, this time but um, uh, let me uh, end up here with a uh, with a little bit of a tube screamer on uh, on this current setting this is the uh, the alternate setting let's see how this goes uh, let's see here. Okay, and last but not least, I got the art core, and uh, I don't think I need to spend a whole lot of time on this one because I use this guitar with this amp um, on a ton of other videos. So uh, check out some of my solo jazz guitar videos. But um, I will say that uh, the settings I use are the EQ is usually uh, leveled off. At times, I've tried to take out some of the bass, add a little bit more mids and treble, but um, typically it's just all level and um, but I do put the mid boost on uh, I think that uh, gives it a nice punchiness and uh, for the like the chord melody stuff you know and solo guitar stuff it, it adds a little bit of clarity to your playing um, otherwise um, it's a little bit too boomy and uh, frankly regardless of the settings um, whatever I have in the room I, I usually have to go into GarageBand and take out some low end afterwards but, um, uh, you know, it's usually good to, it's good to get used to playing jazz with a bit of a brighter tone anyway, because if you're playing in an ensemble or a jazz band, a big band, uh, you're going to need to cut through, you know, when it's time to play. And I know everybody likes to roll the tone all the way back and, you know, be, uh, be big, have a big fat sound, but uh, you do need to brighten up at times. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the room, this sounds perfect. EQ level, mid boost on, very good. And uh, this is the setup I use for uh, all my, pretty much all my, uh, in my, in apartment videos. The live stuff, I have usually have, uh, usually using a Vox with some uh, different pedals and, and uh, different recording methods. But, um, but uh, anyway, I'll play a little bit. I'll uh, do some finger style, switch to a pick, and that'll be good, so. Thank you. 
So probably the biggest issue I had with this amp in the two years that I've had it is rattling or buzzing just in like the amp casing itself. Um, there's like something up top here. There's something right here on the front panel. And frankly, you know, uh, to fix that, I just kind of have to push this in or, or, you know, put something on that to stop the rattling. And, um, you know, but whenever I'd hit certain low notes, it would come back. So I'd have to like push it again, you know, and try to, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing. I was just trying whatever worked. But um, it, yeah, when it, was, when it was buzzing and rattling, it's just impossible to record with. And so I had a lot of, a lot of frustration with that, but eventually I fixed it. And the way um, I did was kind of an accident, but right now you're looking at the amp tilted back a little bit, which is actually, you know, good for rehearsals and such because the sound is directed, you know, up towards your ears so you can hear your guitar a little bit uh, better. Um, but anyway, I was just kind of tilting the amp back to take a look at it and I was playing my guitar and I noticed it stopped rattling. So I figured, why don't I just keep it like that all the time? So um, haven't had any problems since. Should I need to do that? No, but you know, it's not a, it's not a big, uh, not a big deal just to have your amp uh, position like that as opposed to like, you know, taking it apart and trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, luckily, I, you know, was able to uh, stop the rattling in this position. Um, another problem I had was the tubes rattle. Just the stock tubes, you know, made some unwanted noise. And yeah, it was definitely tube rattling, you know, kind of that metallic, glassy vibration that shouldn't be there. And uh, it was manageable at lower volumes, but when I, if I did want to, you know, crank it up, it was just, it was just going to be unpleasant to me. And um, remember I recorded a podcast a couple years ago it's actually yet to be released, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I brought my amp in. I just left it, you know, set as I had it in my apartment. I started playing. I was playing some jazz, and uh, the engineer was like, "Hey, man, you know, you can you can turn it up. You know, we're not, you know, feel free to play out." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So I cranked the master up. You know, I, I brought it up to a uh, to a higher level, and it started rattling like crazy. And he was like, uh, "You know what? Never mind. Just keep it keep it the way you had it." So. Um, but you know, it's uh, again, it's fairly. It was fairly easy to work around. Again, I wasn't blasting my walls out in my apartment, so um, tube rattling was was fairly unnoticeable. But um, you know, the stock tubes did rattle. So last summer, I wanted to replace the tubes and just get rid of that rattling for good. Um, so I got my tubes, and before I had bought the amp, I saw another review. I think uh, by a guy named Vaughn. He's a pretty popular, it was a pretty popular Bouguera video. And he had said that replacing the tubes was a real hassle because the, uh, there's a metal enclosure protecting the tubes and you have to take that off and it's a real hassle to get off. Well, I have to say he was absolutely right about that. Um, the, uh, there's about eight screws in this thing that you need to get out and half of them are okay couple of them were tough and two of them were just impossible. I actually got one, so it wasn't impossible, but the last one was, I couldn't get my screwdriver in there and uh, cause the speaker was in the way. And I have a t little tiny screwdriver, but I still couldn't even, I just couldn't even get close to getting the screw out. Um, so I just, I had, I just, uh, you know, I had most other, the other screws out. I just took the metal casing, I bent it, and <laughs> eventually it broke off, and it's gone. I threw it away. Um, I figured I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> so yeah, this, the last screw is still in there, and the little, little tiny piece of the metal is uh, is attached to it. But uh, once I got rid of that thing, yeah, replacing the tubes is pretty standard. Uh, didn't have any problems there. Um, that's kind of one of the selling points of this amp is that they're exposed. You know, they're not, you don't have to like take the amp apart to, uh, to, to replace the tubes. It's supposed to be made easy. Um, so like, you know, you don't have to worry about touching the electronics inside the amp. Um, but yeah, that metal, that metal casing was just a nightmare. And um, I guess to, uh, to get that last screw out, I guess you just need to take the speaker out. I don't know what else, I mean, I don't know how else 
you know, you would, you would do that properly. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to, like I said, I don't want to take my full, you know, my amp apart and, you know, get, uh, get messed up that way. But, um, but yeah, that was a real, that, that was, uh, that was indeed a nightmare. So there's no covering on the tubes anymore. I, you know, I guess I'm just, I just have to be careful when I'm moving it, but, uh, this amp really doesn't go, doesn't travel too much. And, um, if I move or if I'm, you know, if I'm loading this on, you know, in my car or something, I could always just take the tubes out, you know, put them back in later. And then the last thing um, that I don't like about the amp is the mid boost is only available through this button right here. I really, really wish um, they would have worked it into the foot switch because um, you kind of have to just set it and just leave it there. Um, if you're, if, especially if you're performing, if you're like, if you're playing with a band, you know, if, unless you want to be running back and forth to your amp, you kind of just need to either use it or, or not. Um, that's, uh, I remember the, the first time I played with this amp, I was doing a, you know, a, a, a musical theater show. And yeah, I kept like, you know, having to, I was sitting right by my amp, but still I was, you know, reaching over to do that like every other song. It was just a, just a kind of a hassle. I wish it was, you know, readily available and convenient on the uh, on the foot switch, but um, but no dice. So that's why I just leave it on because I you know usually prefer it. I kind of just you know grew to grew to like it on, especially on the on the gain channels. And uh, again, I like you know I, I want to play jazz with kind of a brighter, punchier sound. So uh, so the mid boost is on, but it would be nice to have that extra control, especially if you're you know, performing, if you're standing, if you're not, you know, close to your amp, something like that. Um, yeah, that would be nice to have that option. And I have to say that I would probably pay an extra hundred bucks if they could, um, you know, work that mid boost into the foot switch um, and, and maybe put a better casing on the, on the tubes that's easier to take off and on and put back on. Um, I know, again, you know, they're using cheap parts. They're not, gonna go all out but I, I would pay a little bit extra money for those two features that's just me maybe not everybody would maybe they wouldn't sell as many amps but um, yeah those are two things that um, that I would really um, that I would really want so my final thoughts um, I would give this amp about a four out of five definitely uh, pretty good maybe the sound quality like a 4.5 you know it's uh, that's probably its best feature, especially that clean channel. Um, but the cheapness is evident in the issues I went over. Um, but you're paying 400 bucks for a really good sounding amp, a really good sounding tube amp. And um, like I said, it's great for apartments. It's great for what I do. You know, um, playing jazz on it is fantastic. Like I said, that clean channel, just right. And um, Maybe some people don't like it. Maybe they'll give it three stars. Maybe they'll want uh, more bells and whistles. Maybe their ears are just pickier than mine. But um, I really enjoy it, you know, and uh, play it all day. And uh, even late at night, you know, volume rolled back, playing some jazz, drinking a little rye whiskey. Just right. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, but I do think you'll, you might run into some of the issues I mentioned. But... Um, Frankly, expensive amps have issues too. They have some of the same issues, other things happen. It really depends from amp to amp. When I'm at Berkeley, there are fenders there that I wanna take home on the spot. And there are others that I wanna get as far away from as possible. So, um, you know, it really just depends on your ears, um, on your taste, on your preferences. But I hope you enjoyed my review of this amp. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I hope you got a pretty good idea of the capabilities of this amp and what I'm doing in my videos. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe, let me know your thoughts in the comments section, uh, and I'll see you next time. Take care.